Hello, my name is Michelle and today we explore the museum district. With its numerous sites and art and painting collections, it forms the intellectual heart of Munich. At the end of the tour we take a short walk through the lively university quarter. We start our tour at Odeon's Platz. From Odeon's Platz you walk straight ahead along Briener Strasse. Soon you will recognize the obelisk at Carolinen Platz. On October 18, 1833, the anniversary of the Battle of the Nations near Leipzig in 1813, the obelisk was solemnly unveiled in the middle of the Carolinen Platz. Bavaria supported the Napoleon opponents Russia, Austria, Prussia, Sweden, and England from 1812 to 1813 with over 30,000 soldiers. The soldiers had to pay for their loyalty to the alliance with their lives. The Briener Street and the Bearer Street crossing the square are named after places of battles of the liberation wars against Napoleon. Continue straight ahead along Briener Strasse until you reach Konigsplatz. For me it is one of the most beautiful places in Munich. A quick run through the classic Greek architectural styles. The Propoli on the west side of the square are in Doric style. Coming from Carolinen Platz, the first thing you see is the mighty gate building. To the right of it we see the Glyptothek in the Ionian style and exactly opposite the collection of classical antiquities in the Corinthian style. This enthusiasm for Greece is essentially due to the Bavarian Prince Otto I. He sat on the Greek throne from 1832 to 1862. Today the modern attitude to life dominates here, sunbathing, cinema outdoors and numerous concerts shape the picture of the square in the summer months. We walk through the archways of the Propylane and recognize on the right, a little hidden in the garden, the Lenbisch Haus. Among other things, the Lenbisch Haus houses the world's largest collection of the Blaue Reiter. This group of artists included such well-known painters as Franz Marc, Vasily Kandinsky, August Macca, Paul Klee, and Gabriel Munter. In 1957, on her 80th birthday, Gabrielle Munter left 25 of her own paintings, 90 oil paintings by her husband Vasily Kandinsky, about 330 of his watercolors and drawings, his sketchbooks, reverse glass paintings and prints and numerous works on paper to the Lenbisch Haus. She also bequeathed works by August Macca and Marianne von Werefkin to the Lenbisch Haus. In addition to this magnificent collection, the Lenbisch Haus also houses the 19th century collection. Originally, the gallery mainly showed works of Munich painting from the 19th century and German art from the early 20th century. The collection New Objectivity is dedicated to art after the First World War. In contrast to previous Expressionism, the painters of the 1920s and 1930s were more sober and realistic. Continue straight ahead to Gabelsberger Strasse, where you turn right. 
we cross Arkis Street and see the new building of the State Museum of Egyptian Art. On 1,800 square meters, exhibits from almost 5,000 years of Egyptian history are exhibited here. The museum shares the modern building with the Hochschule für Film und Fernsehen. The exhibition, which is located in the basement for conservation reasons, is divided into two main areas. The first is dedicated to Egyptian sculptures and shows similar exhibits side by side, regardless of when they were created. I was most impressed by the 5.80 m high obelisk of Titus Sextius Africanus. The second part of the collection is devoted to the themes of belief in the afterlife, religion, writing and text, handicrafts, and ends with art from neighboring regions, Nubia and the Old Orient. On the other side of the street you will see the Nui Pinakothek. Here we find almost 400 works of European art from the late 18th, the entire 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. The collection thus stretches from the Enlightenment to the modern age. The most famous exhibits are certainly Van Gogh's Sunflowers, Spitzweg Poor Poet, the triumphant procession of Germanicus with an impressive 35 sqm screen and not to forget Ludwig I in full ornament. To get to the old Pinakothek, we walk back a bit to Arkistras, where we turn right. After a few meters we pass the main entrance of the Technical University of Munich. A detour to Café Vorha Elzer is definitely worthwhile here. Simply enter the university building, follow the science forum and take the elevator to the top floor. Café Vorha Elzer impresses with its large terrace, which gives us a fantastic view over the roofs of Munich and in good weather as far as the Alps. The cafe is no longer an insider tip, but the international mix of students and tourists has developed its very own charm. But back to the old Pinakothek. It is one of the most important art galleries in the world and shows us more than 700 important works of European painting from the 14th to the 18th century. Here we find paintings by Dürer, Rembrandt, Altdorfer, Botticelli, Da Vinci, Rubens, Titian and Raphael. Between the old and the new Pinakothek we go back to Berestrasse. Just a few meters to the left and we already notice the Pinakothek der Moderne. It is one of Munich's biggest attractions and with its four museums and 12,000 square meters of exhibition space it is one of the most famous exhibition venues in the world. The building alone is worth a visit. At the entrance, the rotunda impresses with a glass dome 25 m high. From here the tours are divided into the four museums, in detail. The Bavarian State Paintings Collection. The new collection of the Munich Design Museum. The Architecture Museum of the Technical University of Munich. And the State Prints and Drawings Collection. We continue walking across the forecourt of the Pinakothek in the direction of Turkenstrasse. At the end of the square we see to our left the impressive building of the Brandhorst Museum and directly in front of us the Turkish Gate. Here we find a sculpture worth seeing by the American artist Walter de Maria. The 25-ton shiny red granite ball large red sphere belongs to the Udo and Annette Brandhorst Foundation. The meeting of the historical building substance with the round and high gloss sculpture unfolds its very own aesthetics. Visiting the door gate is free of charge.
We have already arrived at the last station in the art area, the Brandhorst Museum. The strikingly colorful building houses over 700 works by contemporary artists such as Cy Twombly, Damien Hirst, and Andy Warhol. The Brandhorst Museum focuses on the works of the American Cy Twombly. His works shaped abstract expressionism. The extensive Cy Twombly collection is considered unique and most important outside the USA. Together with the Pinakothector Modern we find here an extensive collection of artists of the 20th and 21st century. At the end of our tour in the art area we dive a little into the university quarter and roam the Theresienstrasse, Turkenstrasse, Amelinstrasse and Schellingstrasse with their numerous cafes, restaurants and small shops. At the end of Schellingstrasse we see Ludwig's Kirchi and finish our tour at the subway station Universität. This is the end of today's tour. A detailed description can be found in the info area of my YouTube channel or in my blog. Did you enjoy the tour? If so, I would be happy about a like. Every 14 days a new video about Munich will be published here. If you don't want to miss any of them, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a nice day, your Michelle.